Hi, this is Will from Pickup Media and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can make a very nice digital card to send to your customers. So over here we have a nice pair of earrings that we shot inside of the gem white box. What we've done is actually put two sheets of uh, material paper as a background to create this beautiful looking uh, shots over here. Um, it is important to note that we move the camera in such a way that the jewelry is taking the bottom one third of the image so that we have plenty of space to leave a message on the top uh, two thirds of the image. So to me this actually looks really good already and is uh, ready to send out um, as a card but what I'm going to do today is just show you some of the Photoshop tools you can use to make this picture even better. So let's get started right away. What I'm going to do is just duplicate this layer over here. Um, I've used a shortcut which is Command J. If you would like to do it manually essentially you would hold and drag this item onto the plus icon here and that would duplicate your layer over here. Next, what we're going to do is mask out this object. Uh, the way we're going to do that today is by using the pen tool over here. So what we do now is essentially we would have to outline the entire object using the pen tool. We would have to get very close and this would allow us to get the object properly masked out for further work. So essentially, the pen tool acts as like a, you could imagine it as a digital pen. We, we are literally drawing over the image right now, outlining every part of it. And by doing so, we can move it onto any background we want and also do very cool enhancements, which I'll show you uh, throughout this video. Um, it does take a little bit of time to get used to, but it's a highly useful tool to add to your um, toolkit on Photoshop. So that's one earring, now on to the next one. And essentially we would have to zoom in maybe 200 or 300 percent just to make sure that our lines are very accurate. We want to get this as close to the jewelry as possible. And finish. So now that we've uh, outlined the path of this pair of earrings, we would simply go to our paths here and command click on this item over here. Now we would go command J, which would put this onto a separate layer. So just to show you what we've done is we've actually masked out this item and it's now on a separate layer. This means that we can essentially edit this layer on its own and anything we do to this layer will not affect the background. But let's get started. There are a couple of things that I would like to do to this image over here. It's on a pink background um, and there's a lot of pink reflecting into the diamond. So I'd actually just like to change or remove some of the pink uh, over here. So I can go to my hue saturation tool. Uh, the shortcut to that is command U. And over here, what I'm going to do is take out some of the reds that are appearing in the diamonds. By moving this saturation down, I will be taking some of the reds out. I don't want to take them out completely because it's going to make the image, uh, will, will make the diamonds look a little bit fake. Um, but I do want to take most of it out. So what I've done here, as you can see, I've moved it to negative about negative 50. Uh, and that's looking quite good to me. Next, I'm going to move out some of the magentas because I still think it's looking a little bit pink. And as you can see, when I move the magentas down, the colors of these diamonds are starting to look very nice. Um, the saturation tool essentially uh, controls the saturation of each color that I choose over here. So if I wanted to, to look very pink, I could push it up. But in this case, I actually want to take the color out. 
so that this diamond really does stand out in this background without any pink inside it. Next I'm going to go OK and you can see that the diamonds are already looking quite amazing. So let me just show you the before and after. Before, little tinge of pink over there. After, the diamonds are completely beautifully white like that. Next, we're going to adjust some of the levels. So the shortcut for that is Command L. Levels essentially adjust the levels of this layer over here. Uh, on the left hand side here, this is our shadows layer. So the shadows is essentially all the dark parts of the image. This is our highlights. Highlights is essentially all the light parts of the image. And this is our midtones over here, which is essentially all of the mid, middle colors, the middle grays of the image. You could think of it that way. Um, so let's just push the shadows a little bit darker and the highlights a little bit lighter. I just want to do that so that the diamonds really do pop out. And then let's go OK. And just to show you that adjustment, really brought the diamonds to shine out. I don't want to go overboard. I just want to bring it so that it is really shining uh, because we've got quite a busy background here. So I want this to have more attention taken to it. Next, let's go image and let's adjust our brightness. So let me just zoom in first before I do that so you can see the changes in live time. I'm going to go brightness bar over here and by moving my brightness up and down, we can essentially choose the perfect brightness for this. So just about five over there looking good. Next, we will sharpen this. So we will go filter. Again, let me zoom in so you can see what the sharpness does to the diamonds. Filter, sharpen, and we will choose sharpen over here. And as you can see, by putting that sharpening filter, the diamonds get significantly sharper. Uh, we can also use our smart sharpen tool, which allows us to have a little bit more adjustment to it. We can turn up the radius and the amounts over here manually, which would affect the sharpness of the diamonds. Um, it's important to note that too much sharpness to diamonds actually make the image look pixelated. So you definitely don't want to add too much to it. Uh, you do want to add a little bit to it because it does give it that extra sparkle and it does bring out those additional facets. So to me, that's looking good. So I'm going to press OK. And again, to show you the before and after, you can see the difference is quite big just through these small uh, enhancements that I've made over here. So I think uh, the jewelry to me is looking quite nice right now. Um, I don't want to add any shadows. I think the natural shadows look good. The background, everything's looking great to me. But what I might just do is just change the color theme a little bit. I do think that uh, having this in a blue background might look better. Uh, just because these uh, these flower earrings look look like they might look more luxurious on like a London blue or something. So essentially the background over here, I'm going to go command U and I'm going to change the hue of the background over here. And by changing the hue, you can see I can push it to any kind of color that I like. So I'm going to move this um, just to like a London blue color because I feel that looks quite luxurious. So over here, I've just moved this down uh, 34, which essentially changes the hue to be this nice blue color. And again, I'm going to play with my levels. So the shortcut for that again was Command L. And I'm going to push some of the shadows down to make that significantly darker. Um, I might just push this up the highlights up a little bit. I think that may be a bit too dark, so I might just play with the mid-tones and get it just right. So that's looking perfect to me now. And what I want to do is essentially just select the bottom part of this area here and just remove some of the color. So the background's nice and blue now. Um, and what I want to do here is just take out a bit of that pink. I think um, this might look better if it's on a more neutral background. So essentially I've selected that out with the pen tool. And again, Command U opens our hue saturation. I'm just gonna tone down some of the color. 
So that's looking really nice to me now. And there we go, we have this amazing looking image. And now I'm gonna go to my text tool over here and I'm gonna just type a message. So let me just find a nice Easter message that I can type. Just gonna copy one from here and paste. Have an excellent and bunny-tastic Easter from Pickup Media. So let's move this right into the center. Make sure that it's nice and legible. We can change the uh, layout of the text and make it centered. Move this back in over here. That's looking quite good to me. We might just play a little bit with the text size to make it perfect. So what I'd like to do is just make this text a little bit bigger. Like so. That's looking quite good to me. So you could send this out to your clients. Um, you can also uh, put it up as a social media update, but this is a very fun way of creating uh, very high quality content. So let's just uh, recap from where we started to where we are now. So let me put this in a group over here. We started over here, which I actually think uh, could be a very good social media update already as it is. Um, but for special occasions, you might want to bring something into Photoshop um, and just do that extra editing to bring it up to this standpoint. Um, and it looks really good. So this uh, image is taken directly from the Gemlight box. It's uh, 3000 pixels times 3000 pixels. Uh, so it's very large and it's uh, suitable for print as well. Um, thanks for watching and uh, any questions, feel free to reach out anytime. Have a good day ahead.